this episode we're uh, going to be creating a shallow depth of field look on our images and we're going to do that using the aid of uh, Photoshop and Topaz Mask AI. Do you ever get an image like this where you wish, you know, the background's kind of soft and out of focus, but you wish you could have got it a little bit softer, maybe used a... Uh, like a wider lens opening uh, on your on your lens uh, or used a different lens but you came back and you had this image but you can go ahead and fix that in uh, post in editing so it's really cool so we can take this image right here and turn it into this image here now I use mask AI to lighten up the background and lighten up the foreground there's some really cool features in there we're not going to get into that today but this is one image that I did I just wanted to give you a couple different examples but we're going to be working on this image right here of this boy here and we're going to create this shell of depth of field look and it's going to end up looking like this so I'm going to show you how I do this it's really easy it's a lot of fun so I also uh, provide a link for this image. You can download it and try it out for yourself. So without any further ado, let's get started. Today we're working with a stock JPEG image. What we're gonna do first is run it into uh, Topaz JPEG to raw AI. I'm gonna go ahead and click open and here's my image right here. Let's open it up. I'm just gonna run it on auto and because that does a nice job but you can go to manual too and you can reduce jpeg artifacts remove blur i might just remove blur a little bit make it a little bit sharper yeah it's a little bit soft i might end up running it through sharpen ai as well here but uh i think that looks good um and let's go ahead and click start and by the way i have it outputting as a tiff now you have two choices here you have either tiff or DNG. And by the way, you'll see TIFF, TIF, and TIFF. It's the same, uh, same, same thing. It's just two different ways of making that TIFF extension. But I could have made it as a as a DNG. But honestly, uh, I work with TIFF inside of Photoshop, TIFF files, and they're very high quality files, much higher quality than what a JPEG would be. So I choose to work with uh, TIFF today. In case you're wondering why I use the uh, JPEG to RAW AI, and they're the reason for it is because when you're working with JPEG files, sometimes um, when you're processing them, you can't push them real hard in your editing process. But if you convert them over to a DNG or a TIFF file, you can work a lot more aggressively with your editing. So that's why I've, I've done that today. Next, I went ahead and duplicated the background layer so we can work non-destructively and call it Sharpen AI. Because remember I said, I think this image looks a little bit soft. So uh, let's go ahead and zoom in. Yeah, see, it's not bad, but it just looks a tad bit soft. So I'm seeing if I want to see if I can bring out a little bit more sharpening in it. So I'm going to go ahead now and launch Sharpen AI. And here we are in Sharpen AI, and I have this uh, split view on here, okay? So let's go ahead and try. This is the new update, by the way, version 2.1.0, and it is on sale right now. Plus, you can save an additional 15% if you use if you use my affiliate link and my coupon code, David Kelly. But anyway, let's go up here to auto in the mode, and it'll automatically pick out which mode it thinks we need here. So let's click on auto and see what happens. First off, let me turn on my auto update preview. Okay, and it says it just needs the sharpen mode. So let's go ahead and also use settings here. There's an auto here for settings. Let's go ahead and click that and see what it chooses here. So it gave us a little bit of noise suppression, a little bit of extra sharpening here. Okay, so that's looking pretty good, I think. So let's drag the slider across. There's the before on the left and the after on the right. That definitely adds a little bit of extra sharpness there, and I think that was a good move to do that. So let's go ahead and click Apply. Now we're back in Photoshop, and I want to send this into Mask AI to blur the background and add that uh, nice, uh, soft, uh, creamy bokeh to the background. And Mask AI will get that job done. Now, I don't have to duplicate the background layer because I have my Mask AI set up to automatically do that for me, which is a nice feature of Mask AI. So I'll just come up here to Filter, and we'll launch uh, Mask AI. There's a great selection feature in Mask AI, and that's this first little icon right here. Auto detect subject. So let's go ahead and click that and see if it gets our little boy here. Yeah, and it went ahead and selected him. It missed an area right here, so the compute brush is here. Now remember, Mask AI uses a, a tri-map system, and basically what a tri-map is, it is a 
blue, which is a compute area that uh, Mask AI uses to determine where the edges are. It has a red cut, which cuts out the backgrounds and things like that, or whatever area you want to cut. And a green stands for keep. So whatever area is in green, like the boy here is keep, the blue is compute, and the red is cut. Then all we need to do is choose our mode here. Now we have two modes under mask mode, AI for artificial intelligence for tougher type uh, uh, masking problems. And then we have contrast. If it's just a simple mask, like buildings with straight lines and things like that, contrast will work and it's fast. But in our case, let's go ahead and use the AI model or mode and click compute mask and let's see what we get. And here we are, a little boy is cut out from the background. Now there's a few little areas we need to fix here, but let's go to background and we want to blur the background. So let's click on blur. And there we go, we have a blurred background. Now we can adjust that strength of the blur. And I want it to look realistic. I don't want it to be overdone. Let's start out with that much right there. Now, I don't really want this foreground area blurred right around in here, but I'm going to go ahead and blur it anyway, and you'll see why, because I'm going to take care of that in Photoshop. So I want to make this fast and easy to, to do here inside of Mask AI. So I'm just going to go ahead and let that all blur. So I'm not going to worry too much about what's happening down in the area around his pants and things like that. Uh, but I do want to take care of these areas up around, you know, you know, from this part of the body up. Now we're gonna go ahead and zoom in and take a look. But before I do that, right now I'm still in the tri-map mode here. So let's shut that tri-map off by clicking this little button right here. And now we can zoom in and our image will zoom in in tandem. I think that's the right word to say. But let's go ahead and fix some of this up here. So as we can see, the mask looks pretty good around the hat and everything up here all looks good. There's a few areas that need fix. So I'm just gonna click on mask and I'm going to get my uh, cut brush right here, make it a little bit smaller. And I'm just gonna come around here and see if I can clean these little areas up. I might speed this up a little bit if it's getting a little too long. But we're just gonna clean these little areas up around here. Okay, and like I said, I'm not worried too much about what's happening down in there. I'm gonna make my brush a little bit smaller. Clean that area up right there. And let's look at his hand here. I'm gonna get my keep brush and make sure I got all of his hand in. Just painting right there. It's real simple to do. You just give it a little paint. And then you might get a few little areas like out here that comes either come back. So just get a cut brush and just like paint that out. Paint this little area out right here. Okay, this little area right here. And I'm going to do this fast. I'm sure there might be some areas I miss here, but, you know, it is a tutorial, so that looks pretty good. I did go ahead and uh, speed the video up here uh, because I just wanted, I didn't want things to get too long here. But take your time and really, you know, analyze things and make sure you don't miss anything. But this is where you could really make or break the masking job. So take your time right here doing this. Okay, and there we go. Let's take a look at the top of our little guy here. He's looking pretty good. I think everything's pretty good right there. Let me zoom back out. Yeah, I'm happy with that. Now, we could come to background, click on background, and we can adjust the background if we wanted to. For instance, we could uh, darken it. I'm on the background now, so we could darken it. In this case, I don't want to do anything to it. I just want to leave the image intact just the way it is. And we could also come to the foreground and click on foreground and then we could just adjust the foreground like we could uh, just lighten up the fore. Oh, I'm on background there. Sorry about that. Let's click on foreground. Then I could just adjust the foreground, which is just the boy there. See, so I can lighten him and I can use any of these adjustments here. I'm just going to double click this. But I think we're good to go. So all we need to do now is click apply. When you click apply, you're giving two choices, transparent or composite. Transparent would be the boy only with a background cut out or composite, sending it back with the composited uh, image. Like you may have a sky image where, or a, a nature image, a landscape where you replace the sky. So you'd want to send it back as a composite. Or if you blur a background like I did here today, you're going to want to send it back as a composite as well. So 
Let's go ahead and click and pause it and that'll send us right back into Photoshop with that blurred background. And now for the fun part is if you weren't having fun already, now we need to simulate this uh, shallow depth of field on this image here. So we're going to do this with a layer mask. So when uh, Mask AI outputted this image back into Photoshop, it came back with a layer mask. Now I need to make sure I'm painting with black paint. Right now I'm painting with white paint. So I'm just going to type my X key and switch that to black paint. I'm going to get myself a decent sized brush here with a opacity of 100% and hardness of 0%. And what I'm going to do is just come across the bottom here and just paint like so. I'm just going to paint this like this right across here. All right. And as you can see, it's looking pretty good, but I need to work with this area here. So what I'm going to do is take my opacity and drop it down to say like, let's drop it down to like uh, 30% and let's paint across here now. Like that, just right across there. And see how that's looking and now if i think i need a little bit more right in here let's take it down to like 10 percent and i'm just going to come down a little bit lower and just paint across here once maybe one more time across like so and that looks pretty good that looks pretty uh natural the uh depth of field here and what i may want to do is switch my paint to white and on the foreground here let's add a little bit of blur because remember mask i blurred this whole area here so uh Let's just uh, switch the white paint and I'm at 10%. Let's go to 20%. Make my brush a little bit smaller here. And what I want to do is just paint across here one time. That's going to put 20% and that's going to blur that 20%. Let me hit it maybe one more time right across here. So now I have a little bit of blur down here in the sharp area right in here on the boy. So that simulates a shallow depth of field. So that's pretty cool. So we started out looking like this, which was a cool image, but I think this looks a lot better. It looks like we used a really high quality lens with a very shallow depth of field to make this image. Now we can continue working uh, on this image, like maybe add a vignette to it or whatever other possible uh, editing choices you may have. But I really today just wanted to show you how to create your own shallow depth of field technique using Mask AI. Let's go ahead and take a look at this layer mask. So this is a layer mask that I painted here. So you see the various shades of gray here with the solid black here where there's no adjustment and the solid white up here where that full blur comes through. So I just wanted you to actually see what that layer mask looks like after a little bit of painting was done to it. Well, there it is, creating your own shallow depth of field uh, using Photoshop and Topaz Mask AI. It's a pretty cool uh, technique, and I hope uh, you learned a lot today. So we started out with this image right here and ended up with this one right here. And don't forget, I showed you at the beginning of the tutorial one of the other images that I made, just to give you another example of what you can do. And this one started out looking like this, and it ends up looking like this. So there you go. Hey, if you enjoyed this tutorial today, please give it a like and share it with your friends. And if you're not yet a subscriber to my channel, please subscribe and click that bell notification icon. Then every time I upload a new tutorial, you will be notified about it.